Hey, what's up? So today we're going to analyze, analyze Matthew Denny, um, a 69-meter Australian discus thrower. I think he got top five at the past two world championships. I think he placed fourth at Tokyo in discus as well at the Olympics. So as you can see, a very good thrower. So I love him for multiple reasons. One is, as you're going to see, the smoothness. And the length of his throw. This is super fluid. And I just love it. I love this. Th I love his throw so much. It's just so aesthetically pleasing. So technically beautiful. It's it's al almost about like. I really just have like no complaints honestly. And I very rarely say that. But I mean there's just so. M there's not very many things I don't like about his throw really. And he's just so consistent as a performer in big meets. Um, and just in his movements, like, he's got it dialed. Oh, it's, it's just a thing of beauty. Um, so, let's get into this. So, as you could tell from the video, or anybody that's seen Matthew Denny throw before, um, he really, he does a very unique wind. And I've been told by some reputable sources he does this for two main reasons. So he does the step in. So he does the step in one to create a tremendous stretch on his right side, and to feel the separation between his hips and uh, his right shoulder. And because the step in really creates a very stable base in his hips uh, to wind from. So, to wind from. So, as you can see, like, he is rock solid right here in his in his hips. Alright? So, and then he is winding super far back, super relaxed. It's, it's yeah, it's beautiful. So, I, I would not recommend beginners or intermediate throwers trying this. I would recommend first getting the basics down. Um, but, I mean... It's not wrong or anything. It's just a unique thing that he's doing. And it seems to be working for him. Because he's consistently placing at Diamond Leagues. He's consistently like top five at major competitions. So it's obviously working. And he's obviously super consistent at it. So it's working for him. So yeah. So let's get into this. So really like this. So I, I love this position. So he's super relaxed. So he's he's reaching out this way. So he's reaching out. So he's almost thinking um, have this uh, left hand touching the discus net to the uh, at ninety degrees. And what that does is it gets his body weight way over his left side. So he's super anchored. Oh, not anchored, sorry. Um, has a lot more weight over his. So a thing I really look for to see if you got weight over your left is is your armpit over the uh, left knee. All right, so if you create this line, that's a very good sign. And as you're going to see, he is super over his left here. So that's very nice. Has a super wide sweep, which I really like. Um, because it creates, it promotes, one, it gets, it, you're a lot more stable and you're not going to fall in. So you're able to stay long. And in discus, you want to be long, long, long. You never really want to be short and tight in discus. All right, shot put, you can kind of get away with that. Discus, no, you want to be super long. The levers are completely different in shot and disc. All right, you need that long left arm to counterbalance this, um long right arm now there are some examples uh to contrary to that opinion um like Lars Riedel and Vergilius Alekna you know both throw with bent left arms but I mean you know they're just crazy so again this isn't a video on them um but I have actually made videos on both of those in my underrated uh throwers series so if you want a detailed I think I spent like 30 minutes or so breaking down their throw because I'm a little geek. But, um, but yeah, so hopefully this won't take that long. And honestly, it really won't. 
So there's not too much I don't like about this though. So I love this position because it promotes this really, really nice um, orbit that he has. So he catches the discus super far. Uh, actually, actually, sorry, I skipped a couple things. Um, so one thing I skipped is I really like how he turns his left foot down this way. So he's not turning it this all the way this way. He's turning it down this sector, which I really like. Um, um, because that way he doesn't over rotate and lose power. So he, so he's stopping it. He's so you notice it here. He's stopping his left foot, letting the right side go around to create, to create that big separation. And he's stopping that chest for that split second when his sweep leg is going. So that means that he's getting that separation between his legs and his arms here. So he's speeding up. So if I play this full speed, you notice that big jump in acceleration from the back of the ring to the middle. That's because he's letting this right leg get ahead of his chest right here. All right. So that's really what you want to look, look, uh, sorry, I'm really tired. If I'm stuttering, I'm really tired. It's, it's late for me. <laughs> um, what was the thing? Oh, oh yeah. So um, the separation that he's getting is really nice because it allows him to get that stretch. It allows his legs to get ahead of his arms, which is what you want in this position. Because if his legs and arms were moving at the same speed, he'd be slowing down because he wouldn't have that separation. All right, so you want in this position to hold your chest. It doesn't have to be for crazy long, but just enough to hit this where your arms are here and your where your chest is facing the sector and your leg and your right foot is way ahead. And then as you notice, so he gets off his left foot when the right foot is pretty much in line or on the right side of the sector. So when he gets here, when his right foot lands, his left foot has a bunch of uh is right here instead of back here and that's the timing you want so if you were if he was if his left foot was to get off here and his left foot was still like around here that'd just be slow really slow so he has excellent timing here where when that right leg is passing um and is is on its way to the middle that's when the left foot is leaving the ground and I don't know if he's of the philosophy of pushing out the back, like, like a sprint f phase, or letting that right side turn the left side and getting it off. So, either way, it's working. So, uh, yeah, I, I love this. I love this position right here. And people say when the right foot, you want to hit this position when the right foot touches. If you notice, his right foot is pretty much touching the ground. I don't know, I guess it is just touching there. But it actually has weight on it here. So it's it's pretty much down here. So it's touching there. But it has weight on it there. And I look for when the foot has weight on it is when things should happen. So like here, his left foot touched here but then he waits and is patient to actually get that right side to turn so he waits for this left foot to actually have weight on it so he has a stable uh force to push against all right so that's what you want to see because if you just do like a short tap with this left foot in the front it's just going to come off the ground really soon and you're not going to have that power and that strong block so you you need to have that weight. So if you are a thrower that tends to throw this way a lot or throw into the cage, you might want to think about feeling a little sort of delay with this left side. So this is going to be kind of hard to see this. But if you notice, uh, maybe you can't really see it because he's just going way too fast to see it in normal film. Um, but... Um, um, sorry, someone was saying something to me. Um, but yeah, so you kind of want to feel 
not a pause, I don't really like that word, more like a delay to let that right side catch up with that left and boom. So he hits the crap out of it and I really like that. But before we get to that, what I really like is this. So I think a lot more throwers are starting to figure out not to squeeze the knees. Um, and I don't like the squeeze the knees. I made a video about it already on this channel. But to give you a little summary. When people are like, oh, squeeze the knees. I think that's just very outdated. Because what's, what not squeezing the knees does is one, it just makes you a lot more fluid. Um, and allows you to be a lot more active with your hips instead of your knees. And two, uh, I like to think of it as another sweep. So you get your sweep here. Why do you sweep? To act as a counterbalance so you don't fall into the, into the middle with this left side and all that. And to basically stay more stacked on this sprint side. All right. So here, because his knees are a little separated here, now it's a lot easier to stay on the right foot and not deviate side to side or shift either way. And because he does this, he can keep this weight on his right foot, land in the super beautiful position here that I like to call the T pose because he's just creating a big T. And that's what you want. So it's not something super crazy. But it's still super far back. And it's super level as well. Which I really like. Because now it can just go dun and dun. Alright. So he's here. Boom. And the third reason why I like this. Is because if he squeezed the knees here. His right foot would stop. And although it would be moving his left foot. So it creates separation in the bad way. Where it's not really separation, it's more like disjointment. So you're kind of breaking the system a little. Like, yeah, you'll get your left foot down faster, but it will break the fluidity of the throw. So it won't flow correctly. So this is a beautiful example of what I look for in a throw is here. And then he really pushes against the ground. And gets this super beautiful position. So his right foot is transferring weight to his left foot into his block. Discus is out of his hand basically here. So he gets a super nice block here. And boom. And there it is. That's his throw. And it's just super. I mean it's very just aesthetically pleasing. Technically so sound. They're like... Ugh. Usually I have a lot to say, like, critique-wise about his throw. I mean, I guess uh, if I had the big one thing, or like, a, maybe a couple things. Um, shoot. Um, I guess this isn't really a negative, but I personally preach a pre-turn. But again, like, he's, he's landing really nice here, so it doesn't really matter. It's just a different school of thought. I don't think he would even throw further from a pre-turn from the way he throws. Um, I guess he could stay grounded a little longer. But again, this is also a training throw. So, I mean, eh. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess he could push against the ground. and uh, Honestly, like I, I'm struggling to find something I don't like about this throw. To be super honest, like... I know that kind of sounds kind of um, something I can't say on YouTube, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I don't know, I, like I'm honestly trying to figure out like something I don't like about his throw. Uh, I guess like this position is a little weird. Eh, no, not really. And eh, no, actually, I like that position. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything really. Well, I mean, let me know in the comments if you don't like his throw, but I personally just can't think of anything like majorly wrong that I don't like. And I really like don't say that for very many throwers at all. Um, I'm usually super critical of throwers, actually, <laughs> especially ones I like. Um, 
But, I mean, he's one of the, I think I can name five throwers. I just, like, yeah, I wouldn't change a, a, a thing about their technique. And, honestly, he's one of them. So, shoot. But, anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Sorry, I'm really tired. Um, so, if I'm stuttering or kind of flipping over my senses, I do apologize. Um... So, yeah, but anyway, I uh, hope you guys like this video, and see you all next time. Thanks for watching.